On this site in North Kensington, there is no parkland and little open space. But Trellick Tower too has a very sculptural form. Its architect was Erno Goldfinger. Everything one does must look good ultimately. That's nobody's business but mine, that it should look good. That's why I'm doing it for. For me, architecture is like solving a mathematical problem, and that's why I appreciate, I mean, it's, it's magnificent. The brief which is given by the JLC is magnificent and uh, complete and precise. And then one can, of course, alter it slightly if, if needed. Goldfinger's Trellick Tower is magnificent sculpture. It is pattern making in the grand manner, a potent symbol of modernism. Parlour is on the top, and uh, the circulation is uh, by means of pumps. Then we have the lift motor room is on top. L at various levels, there are tank rooms and pump rooms for firefighting and for also for distribution of water. All the water has to be pumped. Now all this is isolated from the dwellings. There are bridges which connect this service tower to the dwelling core. These bridges sit on rubber pads and there's no sound transmission from one to the other. Goldfinger has employed fine materials. The concrete has been given a special finish with a pneumatic gun which gives an extremely rough surface which is not only resistant to graffiti but has a rich texture too. Inside the building there is plenty of use made of marble and hard woods, while details like the doors leading onto the access galleries are carefully designed to give an effect of crossing a threshold into a semi-private domain. I had a wonderful client who, when it was a little bit more expensive to use good materials, he let me use good materials because it will save them endless trouble right on. But what can one do with somebody breaks a, a window? The GSC gave us a perfect brief, a very complete brief, the old people's club room was included. We have also included playrooms for children in the service tower, which are not used now because of vandalism. And because there's no organization, they haven't managed to have an organization who can be made responsible for these things. The flats themselves are of an exceptionally high standard. Each flat has a wide frontage with a balcony. And residents have plenty of room to eat out in true international style. This is a typical two bedroom flat. Uh, one of the very important things in this development is this complete pedestrian precinct, first of all, and that we have different size buildings, and every building has a, has a character of its own. You come into the hall, and you know where you go, and I deprecate the re repetition of tower blocks all the same. And if you come home drunk, you don't know where to go. Not only have you, uh, you got to escape the breathalyzer's test, but on the top of it, when you, you can't find your, your front door. Now, that's a great English tradition, of course, that the houses in the street are all the same. When you go into the house, it's all different. All the houses are different from each other. That's a great English tradition. Because the old, the, I mean, the hundreds and hundreds of houses are all the same. Now, despite Goldfinger's enthusiasm, the high-rise solution to the housing problem is facing increasing hostility. When Le Corbusier asked his famous question, architecture or revolution, it was answered, of course, by architecture. Now Oscar Newman, an American architect academic, has been asking, architecture or crime? When masses of people are herded together in an anonymous and impersonal block by an architect who cares not first of all for them, but for the magnificently sculptural forms he is erecting, then respect for property disappears. Newman argues that the failure of modern movement housing is because of its lack of individuality and absence of semi-private areas, 
or what he calls defensible space, the title of his book. Effectively, what Newman is saying is that he wants a return to vernacular architecture. I definitely think there is a future too for high-rise buildings. One didn't wait for Oscar Newman to make defensible space. All, all, of course, one locks one's front door is defensible space. I mean, this is ludicrous, this whole, this Oscar, Oscar, what's his name, it's Newman's. It's not a new idea. Defensible space, I think this, this style of architecture started sometimes in the... 1850s and it's going to go on for the another 50 or 100 years. The Renaissance lasted 500 years. Why, why shouldn't the rationalist architecture of the eight, 1850s, no, don't, not 19, 1850s, not last an, another 500 years? This is a rationalist architecture. Vernacular, this is vernacular. This is the vernacular style. The vernacular international style, like international style, like, like Gothic or Renaissance, or Baroque. Trellick Tower and Roehampton are both recognisable as striking examples of modern architecture. 